We are now in uh, Rule 60 of the Rules of Court in the Provisional Remedies and we are now in Replevin. Now, Replevin is broadly understood both a form of principal remedy or of a provisional relief. It may refer either to the action itself, that is to regain the possession of personal chattels being wrongfully detained from the plaintiff by another, or to the provisional remedy that would allow the plaintiff to retain the thing during the pendency of the action and hold it in pendente lite. In the case of Rivera versus Vargas, GR number 1658952009. The nature of an action for replevin. The action is primarily possessory in nature and determines nothing more than the right of possession. Replevin is so usually described as a mixed action, being partly a in rem and partly in persona. In rem insofar as the recovery of specific property is concerned and in personam as regards to damages involved. As an action in rem, the gist of the replevin action is the right of the plaintiff to obtain possession of specific personal property by reason of his being the owner or of his having a special interest therein. BA Finance Corporation versus CA, GR number 1029981996. The enforceability of a writ of replevin. A writ of replevin issued by a regional trial court or a municipal trial court may be enforced anywhere in the Philippines. Ferdinand versus International Corporate Bank, GR number 1312839099. To distinguish replevin from preliminary attachment are the following. Replevin is available only where the principal relief sought in the action is recovery of personal property. The other reliefs, example damages, being merely incidental thereto. In preliminary attach attachment, Available even if the recovery of personal property is only an incidental relief sought in the action. In replevin, it can be sought only where the defendant is in actual or constructive possession of the property involved. In preliminary attachment, it may be resorted to even if the personality is in the custody of a third person. In replevin, it is extended or extend only to personal property capable of manual delivery, while in preliminary attachment, it may be resorted to even if the property is intangible or incorporeal. Further, replevin is available to recover personal property, even if the same is not concealed, removed, or disposed of. In preliminary attachment, it is to seize any property owned by defendant or adverse party. In replevin also, it cannot be availed if the property is in custodia legis, except uh, when the seizure is illegal, B, where there is reason to believe that the seizure will not anymore be followed by the filing of the criminal action in court, or there are conflicting claims. Chua versus CA, GR number 1192552003. In preliminary attachment, it can still be resorted to even if the property is in custodia legis. When may be the writ of preliminary be issued? When is the application may be filed? When is replevin may be filed? A party may apply a writ of replevin to recover the possession of a personal property A. at the commencement of the action or B. at any time before defendant files answer. That is found in Rule 60, Section 1. Note 
that there can be no replevin before the appellate courts. Applicant need not be the owner. The applicant need not be the owner of the property. It is enough that he has a right to its possession. Young versus Valdez, GR number 733171989. Note that a chattel mortgagee may maintain an action for replevin, where the mortgage authorizes the mortgagee to take possession of the property on default. He may maintain an action to recover possession of the mortgage shuttles from the mortgagor or from any person in whose hands he may find them. This is irrespective of whether the mortgage contemplates a summary sale of the property or foreclosure by court action. Agner versus BPI Family Savings Bank, GR number 1829632013. What are the requisites of the writ of replevin? For a writ of replevin to be issued, the following are required. 1. An application must be timely filed. Section 1, Rule 60. 2. The application must be supported by an affidavit. Section 2, Rule 60. And 3. The applicant must give a bond executed to the adverse party. Also in Section 2, Rule 60. 3. Affidavit and Bond Redelivery Bond Now, the procedure for the application for replement are as follows. First, or first step, application for replement must be filed at any time before defendant files an answer. Second, application must contain an affidavit executed by the applicant or some other person who personally knows of the facts, the matters required under the rules, which shows that 1. Applicant is the owner of the property claim, particularly describing it, or is entitled to the possession thereof. 2. Property is wrongfully detained by the adverse party, alleging the cause of detention thereof according to the best of his knowledge, information, and belief. 3. Property has been distrained or taken for a tax assessment or a fine pursuant to law or seized under a writ of execution or preliminary attachment or otherwise placed under custodial legis, or if so cease, that it is exempt or should be released from such seizure or custody. And for actual market value of the property. Third step, applicant must give a replevin bond executed to the adverse party and double the value of the property. Rule 60, Section 6. Take note that a replevin bond is simply intended to indemnify the defendant against any loss that he may suffer by being compelled to surrender the possession of the disputed property pending the trial of the action. Alim vs. CAGR No. 93213-1991. Fourth, upon the filing of such affidavit and approval of the bond, the court shall issue an order and corresponding writ of replevin describing the personal property alleged to be wrongfully detained and requiring the sheriff forthwith to take such property into his custody. Section 3, Rule 60. Take note that if the detention is actually allowed by law, then no replevin is allowed. Twin Ace Holding versus Rupina. GR number 1601912006. What are the remedies of owner or person entitled to possession to secure return of property? First, object to the sufficiency of the bond or of the surety or sureties thereon. Section 5, Rule 60. In this case, return cannot be immediately required. 
The result of this remedy is to require a bond in a higher amount, that is, a new bond. Only when this order is not complied with, that the replevin is discharged. 2. Filing of counter bond or re-delivery bond. Rule 60, Section 5. In this case, return can be immediately demanded. The bond must be double the value of the property as stated in the applicant's affidavit. The re-delivery bond answers for delivery of the subject property and payment of all sums as may be adjudged. What are the requisites? Number one, it must be filed before the delivery of property to the, to the plaintiff and within five days after the taking of the property by the sheriff. And two, copy must be served to the plaintiff also within five days after the taking of the property by the sheriff. Rule 60, Section 6. What are the sheriff's duty in the implementation of the writ? When is property or when property is claimed by third party? The duties of the sheriff is or are found in section 4 of Rule 60. Number 1, the sheriff must serve a copy of the order on the adverse party together with a copy of the application, affidavit, and bond. Number two, if the property is in the possession of the adverse party or his agent, the sheriff must forthwith take it and retain it in his custody or in the custody of the sheriff. Number three, if the property or any part thereof be concealed in a building or enclosure, the sheriff must demand its delivery and if it not be delivered, he must cause the building or enclosure to be broken open and take the property into his possession. And number four, after the sheriff has taken possession of the property, he must keep it in a secure place and shall be responsible for its delivery to the party entitled thereto upon receiving his fees and necessary expenses for taking and keeping the same. Disposition of property by sheriff. The sheriff shall deliver the property to the applicant. If within five days after the taking of the property by the sheriff, the adverse party does not object to the sufficiency of the bond or of the surety or sureties contained thereon or so objects and the court affirms its approval of the applicant's bond or approves a new bond or if the adverse party requires the return of the property but his bond is objected to and found insufficient and he does not forthwith file an approved bond. Section 6, Rule 60. If for any reason the property is not delivered to the applicant, the sheriff must return the property to the adverse party, also found in Section 6, Rule 60. The rules provide that property seized under a writ of reprieve is not to be delivered immediately to the plaintiff. Under Section 6, Rule 60, the sheriff should have waited no less than five days in order to give the complainant an opportunity to object to the sufficiency of the bond. How versus Andres, AM number P-07-2384-2008. What are the effects of the writ of replevin that has been improperly served? Service of the writ upon the adverse party is mandatory in line with the constitutional guarantee on procedural due process and a safeguard against unreasonable searches and seizures. The writ or order of replevin should comply with all the requirements as to matters of form or contents prescribed by the rules of court. The writ must also satisfy proper service in order to be valid and effective. That is, it should be directed to the officer who is authorized to serve it 
and it should be served under the person who not only has the possession or custody of the property involved, but who is also a party or agent of a party to the action. Consequently, a trial court is deemed to have acted without or in excess of its jurisdiction with respect to the ancillary action of replibin if it seizes and detains a personality on the basis of a writ that was improperly served. The proper remedy of the person being served with a writ should be to file a motion to quash the writ of replevin or a motion to vacate the order of seizure. It now becomes imperative to the trial court to restore the parties to their former positions by returning the seized property to petitioner and by discharging the replevin ban filed by respondent. Rivera v. Vargas, GR No. 165895-2009 What are the remedies of third parties? Number 1 or A, terceria or third party claim. B, separate action to assail possession. And C, file a motion for intervention. Tercera, when the property taken is claimed against whom replevin has been issued or his agent, the sheriff shall not be bound to keep the property under replevin if such third person shall make an affidavit of his title to or right of possession over the property. Such affidavit states the grounds of such title or right. The affidavit is served to the sheriff while the latter has possession of the attached property and a copy of the affidavit is served upon the applicant. Section 7, Rule 60 of the Rules of Court. However, the sheriff shall still be bound to keep the property if 1. The applicant or his agent on demand of the sheriff shall file a bond approved by the court to indemnify the third party claimant and 2. The bond shall be in an amount not less than the value of the property under replevin, as declared in the affidavit of the applicant. Take note that in case of disagreement as to such value, the court shall determine the same. Section 7 of Rule 60 No claim for damages for the taking or keeping of the property may be enforced against the bond unless the action therefore is filed within 120 days from the date of the filing of the bond. Section 7, Rule 60 The sheriff shall not be liable for damages for the taking or keeping of such property to any such third-party claimant if such bond shall be filed. Again, Section 7, Rule 60 Nothing therein contained shall prevent such claimant or any third person from vindicating his claim to the property or prevent the attaching property claiming damages against a third party claimant who filed a frivolous or plainly spurious claim in the same or separate action. Section 7, Rule 60 of the Rules of Court. When the writ of replevin is issued in favor of the Republic of the Philippines or any officer duly representing it, the filing of such bond shall not be required. And in case the sheriff is sued for damages as a result of the replevin, he shall be represented by the Solicitor General. And if he held liable, therefore, the actual damages adjudged by the court shall be paid by the National Treasurer out of the funds to be appropriated for the purpose. Take note that this is similar as in third-party claims, in execution, and in attachment. In Rule 57, Section 14, the affidavit is served upon the sheriff while he has possession of the attached property. In Rule 60, Section 7, the affidavit is served within five days in which the sheriff has possession in connection with Rule 60, Section 6. 